Bunny Ray and his wonky group fell downhill in the Mandalorian tutorial for Mandalorian Overwatch 2 Game Editor. And today, this is part two of the cooking tutorial series. And this tutorial will help you for preparing for your mod, uh, first multiplayer mod. And this time it's going to cover on how to make mini maps for your multiplayer maps or for maps in general. Um, it's a completely optional tutorial. You don't need a mini map to use it for a mod, but it's highly recommended so you know what's going on, especially like this. Since I have no mini map for this map, it, it just looks like it's really confusing and just looks like a mess pretty much so today we're going to focus on that um, and get so this video is going to be quite long so make sure you pause parts or you rewind parts or watch it again because this tutorial is going to be quite long um, getting mini maps to work are easy but it's just that there's a lot of steps involved so let's jump right in so uh, the first thing you're going to want to do here is load the map in FT mode. As of right now, I have it loaded in FT3. So if you haven't already, load the map in FT3. Because we're going to need it for this part of our tutorial um, in order for this to work. So now we just wait and wait for our loadout in FT2. Okay, so once you have it loaded in F2, there's no scripting, no units, there shouldn't be. Uh, if you did, make sure you get rid of them. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of any things that are popping up on the minimaps icon. So for example, these things where my mouse are, anything like these, you want to get rid of. So this little trailer right here, I want to get rid of it. And the reason for why we're getting rid of these icons on the map is because once we take a picture, it's going to load these small icons as well if we just keep them here. So let's say if these things are destroyed, well then they'll still be here even though they are destroyed. Because remember you're technically overlapping it um, and it's technically telling what it used to look like when the map's here. So you want to make sure the map is completely clean of vehicles, cannons. Um, tanks, anything that like that you have. So this tractor, um, anything that comes up with an icon you want to get rid of. And don't worry, you are not saving the map. So just get rid of them for this time being. You are not going to be saving this. So this is just for taking a picture of your map. Um, so these trucks that are hiding in these hangars, you want to get rid of these or things that like that come up as an icon. Uh, and again, another trailer right here want to get rid of as well okay so now you've cleared once you cleared everything off your map uh, you want to go to your clips so just like um, what I had for a couple of tutorials before it was on boundaries and clips um, this one it pretty much you're going to do here is what you're going to do is go to your presets on auto uh, if you have one and pretty much going to move them outside your map Again, we are not saving this instance of this map, so do not worry. Uh, essentially, what you're doing here is when you take the map of, you know, um, picture of the map, you want to make sure they're outside the map. Because if you take the picture and they're inside the map like they used to supposed to be, then you're going to be seeing these yellow, purple, and blue, and green lines, and you don't want to. And pretty much the only way to get rid of that by that point is to, you know, pretty much use uh, a program to get rid of it by, like, editing it out and stuff. So in, to save all your troubles instead of doing that way, just move them out of the, you know, the map's boundaries, pretty much. You want to move them way out of there. Um, so I'm just going to try to move them if I can. There we go. So, so I'm going to do this to all four sides so it makes it a lot easier for me. So these won't come up when we take the picture. Uh, well, they will, but they won't be inside the map itself because what we're going to do is when we start loading it, this uh, image into a program, we're going to essentially crop the image so all this stuff outside, like all this blackness will be gone. So, um, yeah, so now, okay, so this side's all set as well. So once you did that, um, you can go back, uh, pretty much you're going to now click off where it says clip camera position. So check this off and essentially what this does is it keeps a, you know your camera in sync so if you had it checked on where you can't go higher than you're normal for a camera when you're playing a regular game if you check this off this allows you to zoom in or zoom out 
pretty much infinitely. Um, and what you're gonna do is, is once you check it off, zoom out as far as you can. So you wanna zoom out until you see your entire map. Um, so keep zooming out, and if you don't have a good PC, um, I would suggest lowering the graphics just for this one point because it's going to get laggy, especially like as you can see right here. I mean, I have a good PC, but since there's so many objects, there's just, you know, so much to load in one, uh, you know, by looking at it all at once. So you want to make sure if you have a low-end PC, it's going to lag for you. I suggest lowering your graphics or whatever to make sure it doesn't crash your your editor or whatever the case may be because um, it's going to happen regardless of even if you do have a very good PC. Um, so now what we're going to do is once we zoomed out, we're going to pretty much face our camera north position. So why are we doing it this way is because if we take the picture in another um, direction, if we take it east, west, uh, east, west or south, what will happen is when we load it back into the maps folder, <coughs> excuse me, um, it'll essentially, it'll put the map backwards, so make sure it has to be north, it's a pretty much that's like the norm, it's at the zero position, pretty much, if you, that's like the normal default position, um, if you load it, if you put it south, so how do you know in the direction you're facing, well in the mini map, as you can see, there's these little icons, you know, N for north, S for south, D, uh, E for east, or W for west, Pretty much, you want to face your camera towards the north position. Now, for Men of War Soul Squad and Men of War Soul Squad 2, your cam, well, your mini map will have these little uh, indications telling you which way it's facing which. However, the older Men of Wars, for example, original Men of War, does not have this feature. So, if you are working on a mini map for the original Men of War, how do you know which way you're facing? Well, it's complete trial and error. You're going to have to pretty much try all four ways, um, which kind of sucks, but I think that's why the developers did it. So when they're making their mini-maps, they just put like a north, south, east, and west. So you kind of know which way you're going, because technically when you're playing this game, you don't really need to care about direction. So um, I think this is a reason why they added it in, so it makes it easier for when you're um, facing north. So make sure you always face the camera north. Now, what I have here is you want a complete top-down of the map. So make sure you zoom out all the way so you can see from end to end of the map, and you want to make sure you are completely top down. Not, for example, something like what I have my camera as of right now, this is not acceptable. You want to make sure it's completely straight top down as I have it right now, because as you can tell, when you load up like a regular map that has a, you know, a mini map, you'll notice it kind of looks exactly how we have it right now. Am I right? So you want to... Pretty much, you're taking a picture straight down at 90 degree angle, going straight down. Um, and yeah, that's really I have all I have for you. Again, um, another thing I want to mention is you want to make sure it's completely lined up. If, for example, if I just rotate my camera, how it's on an angle, again, that's also going to be kind of unacceptable because when you're going to bring the photo, the photo into like some program, um, it's going to be kind of hard to crop the image because it's you know it's on an angle. Um, so it's easiest way to do it is just line it so it's perfectly 90 degrees, um, you know, with the camera and the map. So make sure it's as best as you can. It, you know, you're not going to get it perfect, but try and get it as close as you can get. So how I have it right here is pretty much good. Um, if it's off a little bit, I'm, you know, I'm not going to worry too much because this is just an example for a tutorial. So I'm not going to go crazy. So when you're all set with all this stuff, you can take your picture with the stream integration picture taking feature, uh, and you do that by ta uh, by pressing F12 on your keyboard. So say at the bottom right, Men of War, Soul Squad 2, screenshot, save. And we are all done with the editor, so when you're done, you can just exit out. And again, you do not have to save this, so you can just, when it says that you want to save it, you can hit no. Okay, now we're on our desktop here, and we're going to, pretty much, you're going to wait for your screenshot uploader to load up. If it doesn't load up, you can find it in the files, or there's probably some something on here where you can find your photos. I believe there is. I don't know. Um, you'd have to look around. But for the most part, when you exit a game, it'll show all the pictures that you've taken in that one session while you're playing. Um, and you pretty much, you want to only select one picture. If you've taken multiple instances of this picture, um, I would try and focus on the best one that you've taken. Um, 
So yeah, like for example, mine, I only take in one. So pretty much what you want to do is select the image. All right, so select the image that you want and hit show on disk. So when you hit show on disk, it's going to bring up the file location on where these pictures are stored inside uh, Steam. So what you're going to do is just um, click the image that you want and drag it to your desktop. get rid of all that stuff so now we have our image on the main desktop so now what we need to do is pretty much edit this photo so I'm gonna be using a program um, called Photoshop I don't know what you guys are gonna be using but in my case I'm gonna be using Photoshop um, and pretty much I'm gonna open it if you don't have Photoshop you can uh, there's probably other programs that allow you to edit a photo all you're really doing here is taking this photo and cropping the image so you can get rid of all that unnecessary stuff that's on the sides of the image. Um, so if you don't have like, if yeah, if you don't have uh, Photoshop, there's probably others like maybe Windows Live Photo Gallery. I don't have no idea because I've really never used that program, but I don't think it can. Um, but like I said, Photoshop is probably the best idea. Um, but like I said, there's probably others out there that allow you to do this as well. So. Um, open up your image whatever program you're using now if you are using Photoshop you can follow along if not then you're just gonna pretty much do what you have to do in order to crop an image in that program that you're using um, but for the people who are who do own Photoshop pretty much you're gonna click on the background and make it a new layer uh, you're gonna make another layer as well and pretty much pretty much what you're gonna do is click on the main layer and create uh, use the selection tool and you're going to drag a box pretty much around the map. So, um, yeah, that should be good. And see how I didn't perfectly align it 90 degrees? As you can see, it's kind of hard to um, make a selection around it. That's okay. I can still, you know, use the um, selection tool to get rid of some extra excess stuff. So, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control X uh, to cut that picture out. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to pretty much delete the rest of this because I don't need the excess around of this image. And pretty much I'm going to paste it into the new layer. So as you can see, all this extra black on the sides. Now what you can do is if you're in Photoshop or your other programs, you can pretty much go in and do some detailing work by getting rid of that unnecessary wanted stuff. Uh, and I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to go crazy on it. But I'm going to try and do the best I can, kind of just for the demonstration purposes. I'm going to try and get as best as I can to it. Um, so I'm kind of doing this a little fast just for demonstration purposes. But you're going to, when you're making your own mini map, you want to try and do as best you can so it makes it look nice. So it doesn't look like it was kind of gypped and, you know, just kind of like makeshifted. Um, you want to make it kind of look professional. So I'm going to kind of get rid of all this as much as I can. That should be good. I teared off a little bit of extra, but that's okay. So uh, now what we did was we created pretty much its own thing. The rest of the image that was taken is pretty much all gone. So, but we're still not done here yet. Uh, what we want to do is see this entire rest of this image since it was the original size of the image that it was. Um, if we save it, it's going to pretty much make it a loose, like pretty much have a white background. That's if you make it into a JPEG. But if you make it to a ping, you'll still have um, a looseless background. You'll have an alpha channel on, so um, a transparent background that, for that matter. So what? But to get rid of, since it's still extremely small to the original size, what we're going to do is we're going to hit File New, and pretty much when you hit File New on Photoshop, it automatically takes the same size of this image, and you're just going to hit OK, and it'll like pretty much take the dimensions of this new image. And as you can see, now it's the same exact dimensions of that new image that we just inserted so we could pretty much um, take this image and copy it into and paste it into this new um, file and there we go so yeah it's gonna like I said since I cropped a little bit using some of the selection tool to delete that extra stuff it's gonna be a little bit um, you're gonna see a little bit of white but not too much it's it won't be as bad 
So uh, when you finally, so now we can get rid of this, this old one. Okay, so now when you're completed with this, uh, you're going to go to your file and hit save as. Uh, and you're going to save it to your desktop. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, I'll just I'll just call it Minimap for now. And uh, you don't want to hit save as right away because when in Photoshop, for example, it will try and save it as a PSV. Uh, what you want to do is save it as a JPEG or you can even save it as a ping file as well. Um, but JPEG is probably your um, go to for that. So well, I'm going to choose JPEG and I'm just going to save it to the desktop. Okay. Now we're still not done. So uh, if I open it, it's going to just have it like this, which is fine. But we're still not done here. What we need to do is finally open this up and transfer it into a new file format called uh, DBS. DBS is pretty much another file format for images that Men of War can read. Um, and DBS is specifically made for using and making um, uh, mini maps. So if you look in the files, um, you know, other missions people have made or developer maps, you'll see a DB .dbs as their minimap. Well, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to transfer this JPEG into a DBS file. So in order to do that, you need a specific program, and it's called DXP BMP. So I'm going to open this up. Now, if you don't have DXP BMP, I suggest you do get it. It's free. Trust me, there's no viruses. I've been using it for quite a while now. Um, but I'm still learning it, so I'm kind of new to it. So forgive me if I make some mistakes. I, you know, I'm still fairly new to this. But uh, DXP BMP, the reason why we need this is because this is pretty much one of the only programs that can convert an image to a DBS file format. So I'm going to open up um, that JPEG file that we've created from our Photoshop. I'm going to open it. And, okay, so as you can see, there it'll open up in here. And all I'm going to really do is just going to go File, Save As, and then it'll be right there, DBS Texture. Again, I'm going to save it to the min, uh, to the main desktop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I already, it's already there for me, but I'm going to type it in again. You need to call it Minimap, and then when you hit save, it'll just put .dbs. Um, if you call it anything else, I believe it won't work. It won't register it as an actual Minimap file, so make sure you call it Minimap. You make sure it's um, spelled correctly and all that stuff, and then .dbs. So when I hit save, um, you'll notice it's going to create a new file format, and for some of you that have gone into the file uh, locations, you're going to remember, you might mention, you might actually remember this file format, like the, the icon, how it has like a picture and has like a picture inside the piece of paper. Um, so yeah, this is exactly what we're going to need. So now what we can do is just drag this um, DBS file into our file location. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is um, go to our file location. So I'm going to open up my file. Um, and I'm going to scroll down to Program Files 86. Um, I'm going to scroll down from here and search for Steam. Now, once I'm in Steam, I'm going to look for Steam Apps. Then Common. And pretty much all this is all your games pretty much for your Steam library. So, uh, yeah, so we're searching for Men of War Pulse Watch 2. Now, if you're doing it in the other Men of Wars, um, obviously you're going to want to click them on here, but um, in my case, I'm going to be using Men of War Pulse Watch 2. Uh, now, I'm going to, since this map is not in a mod, it's under my resource folder, so it's not in a mod, so I'm going to go to resource, then map, and then co-op zero underscore zero one because that's where I have the map located. If it's in a mod, um, then you would go to mods folder and then you would search for the map there. So it's where I went from mine. It does depend on where you save this map to. So pretty much now we have our map folder location, and I can take the minimap.dbs and just drag into um, right into this folder. And that's really about it. So we can uh, close, uh, actually I'll minimize this for now. I'm going to close out of DXP and uh, close out of Photoshop as well. And let's load it up in the Men of War Soul Squad 2 editor.
and when you load it up now you put it into the file location it's automatically going to be there no matter if you load in F2 or F3 it should automatically pop up when you uh, load it up I'm going to load it up in F3 for my case Okay, and there you go. So, as you can see, the map is correctly aligned. As you can see, how we remember how we had that white outline. Uh, let me hold on one second. Let me just adjust the size of it so you can see a little bit better. All right. So, uh, wait, hold on one second. Uh, management. Okay, there we go. Okay, so as you can see right here, um, it made the size of this mini map correct to the actual size of the mini map that we created it as. Uh, you'll see those white outlines because remember how I was a little sloppy with it. Again, when you're going to be making your own minimap, you're going to try and make it as best as possible. Um, and yeah, that's really about it. It's correctly facing north. Everything's in pretty much the correct position. Uh, like for example, let's go to these guys over here. And pretty much they're in the exact correct position as they were. And even when I select guy and he's all, um, you know, uh, he, you know, moves uh, correlating to the mini-map. And yeah, that's really about it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, rather long tutorial. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it, uh, liked it, and favored it, all that stuff. If you have any questions or comments or no concerns about this, let me know. Put it in the comments down below. Um, uh, if you want to contact me to my email, my Facebook, my Steam, I'll have all that stuff in the link. Uh, well, all the links in the description so you can contact me through there. And as well as I'll also put up all the um, download links if you want to download Photoshop or DXP. Um, I'll have those up in the description as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my video and I will see you guys next time.